happy Tuesday. Happy first vlog of summer. So if you saw my last vlog, I had a really, really rough finals week, but I made it through, got everything submitted, and now I am officially free from the semester of spring 2021. So if you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am a grad student at Indiana University. I study English, specifically rhetoric and composition. I am smack dab in the middle of my program. So I finished the first three years, which were um, completely consisted of co coursework. And now I'm moving into the final three years, which consist of basically taking exams and writing my dissertation. So this summer is going to be filled with me reading and studying for my big comprehensive oral exam in the fall. And today I'm actually going to go ahead and show you guys a sneak peek of what that reading list looks like and how I am trying to plan out a schedule to get all these texts read before early September. Okay, so I finished planning out a rough schedule of things and I actually used Notion to go ahead and do that. So I'll get into that a little bit later, but right now I have to get ready to go to dinner with two of my friends from high school who we try and get together every time that we are all in town. Um, so I haven't seen both of them probably since like Christmas time. So I'm excited to see them. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready for dinner now. <music> to another dressier tank top because that is the only uniform when it's as hot as it is in Miami. Okay, so I have something really exciting right now. I want to talk to you all for a little bit about Ana Luisa Jewelry. So this is the first partnership sort of collaboration whatever you want to call it that I've had on this channel and that's super exciting for me so they went ahead and they sent me two pieces that I was able to pick out they sent me these earrings that I'm wearing right now and this bracelet so these are the scarlet earrings and this is the Lisa bracelet and I think that they are just the most beautiful little everyday pieces to ever exist. I had heard about Ana Luisa jewelry from some other YouTubers, influencers, friends, and stuff before, and I knew that they were a sustainable jewelry brand. And sustainability is something that I'm really trying to incorporate more into my life in small, everyday ways. And something as simple as buying from a brand like Ana Luisa that cares about offsetting their carbon emissions is a really, really easy way to implement um, more of that sustainability focus into your everyday life. And their pieces also have really fair prices. They start at only $39. There's really something for everyone. I really think that you will love them. They also make them in limited batches. So if you see something that you like, buy it quickly. Um, and that's another way that they care about giving back to the environment. I love that they're so simple. I really think that they can go with everything. This bracelet would be such a beautiful piece just to wear alone. Um, but I could also stack a gold watch on top of it or some other bracelets. Um, there have been a few that I've had my eye on from Anna Luisa that have been great. Um, these earrings are just a small little double hoop. I don't have my second ear pierced, but I love that they sort of make it look like I do. But if I did, I could also wear these with like a smaller huggy that would be super cute. Um, or again, just by themselves. And I love the gold on them. I think they will be so pretty. Um, to just spice up a simple outfit like right now I'm just wearing a simple black tank top and jeans when I'm going to dinner at a nicer restaurant so just throwing on these two really simple pieces really take the outfit to the next level and I don't have to worry at all about the quality of them I've already showered in them sweat in them um, I wore them this morning when I went for a walk in the park they're super lightweight not worried about them falling out not worried about them dragging my ears down at all um, and I plan on wearing them to the beach when I go later this week or next week and don't have to worry at all about it turning my wrist green or turning my ears green, rusting, cracking, chipping, anything like that. It is really great quality. So I actually have a link that you all can use down below in my description box and it will get you 10% off. Like I said, please go ahead and comment if you use this link or if you plan on buying any pieces or if you have some pieces from Ana Luisa 
um, and let me know. I hope that you love them as much as I do. So again, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for gifting me these two pieces. These are really, really beautiful, and check out the link in my description box. Hello, happy Wednesday. Today I did not vlog. It is already 9.30 p.m., but very exciting news, I bought a car today. So if you have been following along with my vlogs for quite some time, you know that I currently have a car up in Bloomington, Indiana, because I had no idea that I would be home in Miami, Florida for as long as I was. And my car has, for the most part, just been sitting there. Even got towed at one point when I did not mail my new tags for my license plate. Anyway, that took up pretty much my whole day in the best way possible because my dad helped me buy a car. So, love that. Super, super excited. That means I get to be driving back up to Bloomington with him and not flying. So, updates to come. Maybe a road trip vlog. Um, but I do want to chat about my reading list and my strategies for reading. Okay, so here is the reading list. I have one um, page here of just an explanation of each of the sections and two lines here that establish what I think the goals of this list are, um, which is one to demonstrate sort of knowledge of the evolution of the field and then also to establish the core areas that are going to shape my dissertation project. So my general orientation to the field and my particular interests. So I have split up my reading list into three sections. The first one is rhetoric and composition more broadly. So we start off with bits of rhetorical situation, really famous rhetorical text. And this section here is focused on like rhetoric proper. We have some things from like ancient rhetoric here again. So this can demonstrate my knowledge of the evolution of the field. We have some edited collections here. This is about like rhetoric in public places. This is about ethos. This is a mixture. This list as a whole, especially this section, is a mixture of text that I haven't read as well as text that I have already read in coursework, which also is shaping um, my plans for how I want to and my strategies for how I want to go about actually diving into this stuff. And it is a mixture of edited collections, articles, and books which each take a different approach or I will take a different approach for each one in terms of how I will go about reading that. So the second section is decolonial rhetorics and writings. So this is a section devoted to, I don't even know how I want to phrase it. I don't want to phrase it as like filling the gaps um, or like speaking back to because I don't think that's what it's doing. I, I guess I want to phrase it as sort of like opening up. This is opening up like the canon of rhetoric and I have a lot of text from women here, a lot of text from people of color about race, about coloniality, about colonialism. Um, I took a class on decolonial rhetorics last fall, so a lot of those texts made it to this list have something by Bell Hooks, Angela Haas, um, different ways of rewriting these classical texts from feminist points of view, stuff like that about multilingual practice, um, multilingual pedagogy, multilingual writing in academia. And then the last section, this is most specific to my research interests. This I labeled writing studies and writing centers because, again, if you've been following my blogs, you know that writing centers are sort of like what got me into grad school and what I'm still very interested in studying. So in this section, I have things that are focused on composition studies specifically. Um, this is an added collection from a class I took on like community writing and service learning. Um, I have some other texts here, a lot from my independent study. This is just about like the field of like writing studies, composition, um, the teaching of writing specifically. And I want to think of like writing really broadly. So I have things about emotion, writing in the senses, writing in the body, um, and specifically things about writing centers as well. And that brings us to 104 texts, which I hope to get through from now, mid-May to the beginning of September. So Notion is something that I have like messed around with a little bit, but I haven't ever like fully used it. Um, but I'm, I'm trying it out for this whole reading list, studying for comprehensive exam process. This is just, I only made two like side pages here, a homepage and then sort of like the calendar. And I just put a cover photo of a plan, a little thought bubble for like the page icon. I feel like my goal with this is just to be sort of like calm and relaxed when I look at it. 
I have one of my favorite quotes from um, a text that I read in my independent study that links writing in the body, which is something that is central to my focus as I enter into this period of reading for exams. I have this reminder here, be gentle with yourself. And then I have daily tasks and summer goals. So each day I want to get something or I want to do something to get my body moving, whether that's walking, doing yoga, or just taking um, a couple minutes to meditate. And I also want to read every day and write every day. So I'm not going to do these on weekends um, because otherwise I would have incredible burnout. Um, but I am planning on reading and writing um, every single weekday. My goal is to write just as much as I read, um, whether that's responding to specific questions about each text or just like doing free writes and journaling. Writing is a really important way for me to process my thoughts. So that's important for me to write. And then summer goals. Obviously, this is for like the next couple months. What are some things I want to accomplish? I am working on an article that I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to get into print. So that is a big goal of mine to finish that up, to work through that process. And there's some more things that I want to add to my summer goals. <laughs> Obviously, it's not just this one thing, but I'm still um, working on that list there. So then I also have this reading list schedule. And this is just a calendar, and I think the best way to go about this is to just take things week by week. I don't think I can plan out a whole month at a time of what I want to read each day. I think even planning it week by week is a little bit ambitious. So this was originally starting yesterday, but when I went to dinner with my friends, I was super tired when I came back, so I wasn't, so I didn't actually get to read anything. So I'm moving it to today, which I'm going to read this article in just a bit. So I'm only reading one article today because it was a busy day and then tomorrow I'm going to read a book. So I just told myself in the little icon, whether it's a book, article, edited collection, whatnot, put the last name of the author and put the name of the whole book here. And then there's also a book review that I want to read that goes alongside this. So I put that in the notes section as well. So then I can just click on each tag here and it tells me um, what I'm reading for that day. I also went ahead and I tagged them by what unit they're in. So for this week, I'm focusing on things that are all in unit one of my list, which is like rhetoric proper. So I'm starting off with a text that I have um, skimmed this past semester for class. Then tomorrow I'm going to take on a book that I have not read. And then this is a mixture for Friday. I have read these two, but I haven't read this one. But I feel like these all speak to each other in interesting ways. So that's why I'm going about reading them all in one week. And then over the weekends, I figured that could be the time when I plan out what I want to read for the next week. So that's the plan. Obviously, as that reminder says, I'm going to be very gentle with myself if I don't get through absolutely everything on my reading list before the exam date. Um... It is what it is, and all that I can do is my best. I'm not feeling super anxious about starting. Um, I'm just not feeling incredibly motivated, and I think it's just because I've had, like, a lot of other things going on. Like, today I was buying the car, and yesterday I was hanging out with family, and I went to dinner with friends, so I just haven't been, like, really focused on school. And also I'm still recovering from a really rough end of the semester from spring. Um, but it's been about a week since I've been finished now, and I think it's time to start reading. And as I said in the calendar, I'm just going to take things week by week and see where we get. I'm also hoping to email my chair at some point this week and ask if we can set up maybe like a recurring meeting during the summer so I can just check in with him maybe like once every two or three weeks, just chat for like 30 minutes and say like, here's where I'm at, here's some questions I had, um, here are my thoughts, and I think that will like help me be held accountable and also I don't know make me feel like I am on the right track because this can be like just a really isolating process I also think that once I actually get back to Bloomington it's going to be like a lot easier I'm hoping to get into a rhythm with things I'll have my own space I'll have my own schedule um I love my family I've loved living at home for the most part but it has been a little bit hard especially recently to focus on school ahead and read this article on my computer because my iPad was dying and did a quick little writing reflection here sort of 
annotated bib style summarizing what it's about, noting the places that resonate with me and my research interests, and set myself up to do my reading reflection for tomorrow. Thursday. It is 9.45 p.m. I went to my brother and sister-in-law's house today and we just ate pizza and played games and we were all very much in summer mode. So I didn't actually get to doing any reading for the day and I thought that I would have more energy when I came back at night to maybe read through an article or two, um, but I don't. So sticking with my reminder of being gentle with myself, that's okay. Um, I like the fact that I haven't scheduled anything for Saturday or Sunday because then I can do work on Saturday, um, if need be. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get a lot of sleep tonight, go to bed early, and wake up earlier tomorrow and go to a coffee shop because my sleep schedule's been all out of whack. So that's the plan. Happy Friday! I just got finished up working in a coffee shop. I actually got a good amount done. It was a new coffee shop that I've never been to, um, but it's really cute and I will be returning. I read a book review, the in well two book reviews of a book and the introduction of it. So it's basically like three articles and I just want to read the final chapter and maybe one other chapter in between and then I will be pretty much done for the day and it's only noon. So happy with my progress today. All right, it is a little after two. I came home, ate some lunch, and finished up reading the rest of what I wanted to for that book. My cat is going a little nuts right now, but I feel good. Um, and I feel like I didn't get as much done this week as I was necessarily wanting to, but I started, created a schedule, and I feel good about the pace I'll be able to work at for the rest of the summer. I also went ahead and did my little reflection on the sections that I read. I don't plan on necessarily writing this much for every text. These two, I just had the time to read them more in depth. So I thought, why not? Also, writing paragraphs is way more useful than writing bulleted lists. Bulleted lists is easier in the moment, but writing paragraphs in the long run is way better because you have a better idea of what it is that you were even trying to say all those months ago when you wrote it. So once again, thanks so much for watching this video. Please be sure to comment with any questions that you might have, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Also, don't forget to click the link in my description box that will get you 10% off your entire order at Ana Luisa. And thank you so much to Ana Luisa for gifting me these beautiful earrings and bracelet that I showed in the earlier clip. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!